not to do any harm to them, and if you can, to do good to them. Okay. To pray for them, to avoid any harm. If you cannot do something good, don't do anything. And if you can, to do something good for them. If you do this, God will fill your heart with a great love for that person. Whatever coldness or evil is, is remaining will disappear. And then lastly, we have to allow the grace of God to work on its own. We don't say, I did this for a week, didn't change, I'm done. I tried. No. We trust that the grace of God is working in us according to his will, according to his timeline, little by little, in a way that we cannot see. So we have to allow the grace of God uh, to work. Again, one of the fathers, he says, God's commandments are beyond man's conception and power to fulfill. It is not up to us to fulfill the commandments. We are humbled from the moment we come into contact with them. Meaning when I read, love your enemies, I become immediately humbled by this because I know it's impossible. It's not something I can do. The commandments of God have the specific effect of crushing the arrogance of our darkened minds and hearts as to clear the way for grace to dwell within us. Let me explain. The commandments are difficult on purpose. At least we imagine them to be difficult on purpose. Because it is the only way for God to crush our arrogance. If he gives you a commandment which is, uh, can you move this from here to there? You say, of course. It's easy. Proud. But when he says to do something impossible, immediately you, your arrogance is crushed. And this is what God wants. He wants us to fall and say, Lord, I cannot do this. Because when we have that beginning point, then he begins to work with his grace. Then he begins to give us his strength through our weakness. He goes on to say, they shed light on our imperfection, on our spiritual poverty and weakness, like something that exposes us. So that we cry out to God from the heart, asking him to come and fulfill his own commandment in us. When I see that I am utterly powerless, weak, then I can begin to cry out to him and say, Lord, save me, I'm drowning. Help me, I'm weak. This is the only way, as he himself said, without me, you can do nothing. So the last step in, in enlarging the heart is to allow the grace of God to work in us by reading the commandments of God, reading the lives of the saints, reading uh, the spiritual books, so that we are humbled by the examples of the saints. When we read about St. Justine and St. Cyprian, we are humbled. We cannot do what they did. But this, this humility, this crushing of our arrogance, our pride, is the beginning. Then we begin to cry out to God, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when, he, when I cry out to him with a real humility, then he begins to answer me. And then my final point is that love is freedom. Love is freedom. Because love is the victory over sin and death. And, and, and love is the only way to overcome sin. Sometimes, and, and I'm sure Abuna, he hears this uh, in confessions all the time, that we come to confession with certain sins and we are um, crushed by certain sins that we cannot overcome. And we define our whole spiritual life by these sins. I'm not a Christian, I'm not going to grow, I'm not uh, loved by God until I overcome this sin. And we... It's like a, a dog chasing his tail. It's, it's, it's impossible. This is not how we overcome sin. One of the, again, one of the saints, he says, imagine we're in uh, this room, this church, and uh, every seat is full. There's not one place to sit. Like, you know, when we celebrate the feasts like Easter, you know, they say, oh, I went to church, I couldn't find a place to stand. So imagine we're now like this now, and one person comes in the back of the church, and he wants to come into the church. He cannot find one place to, 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 to even stand in the church. So he remains outside. He remains outside. This saint, he said, this is, is like the heart. When the heart is full of love, love for God and love for neighbor, 
There's no room for the, the person that is the sin that wants to come in from the outside. The sin comes from the outside and looks and doesn't find any space. Where am I going to, where am I going to rest in that, in that person's heart? It's too full. So it remains outside. Just a temptation, but it has no power. But if my heart is empty, there's no love for God and no love for man, but all I think about is sin, 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 sin. And then the sin, when they come, it's easy. They find many places in my heart. And they occupy my heart. So he says the best way to have victory over sin is love. To grow in love. To love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Fill your heart with love. Struggle to have that love, and sin will, will be powerless. Sin will be powerless. Finally, one more quote from one of the, the modern spiritual fathers. He says something very beautiful. He says, my heart only has entrances. It doesn't have exits. My heart only has entrances. It doesn't have exits. Whoever enters remains there. Whatever he may do, whatever he may do, I love him the same as I loved him when he first entered my heart. I pray for him and seek his salvation. Imagine... If we, each of us, we contemplate in our own life how many people entered my life and exited. How many entered my heart and they went out. My heart only has entrances. It has no exits. This is the heart of Christ. This is the heart of Christ on the cross who embraced everyone and didn't allow anyone to escape his love. It encompasses everything, everyone, in every age, every generation, good and bad. A heart with no exits. May our Lord Jesus Christ give us um, a beginning to have such a love. And glory be to him now and ever unto the age of ages. <laughs> Mini te vasta brosente Jesus, Bechristo se boro penotin, anything as greatly honored is the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ, the King. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, Logos of God the Father, has broken every bond of our sins through saving life, giving sufferings, who breathed into the face of his holy disciples and saintly apostles, said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. You also now, our Master, have given grace through your holy apostles. So those for time labor in the priesthood of your holy church to forgive sin upon the earth and to bind and to loose every bond of iniquity. Now also we ask and entreat your goodness, O love of mankind, for your servants, my Father, my brethren, and my weakness, those bowing down their heads before your holy glory, dispense to us your mercy and loose every bond of our sins. And if we have committed any sin against you knowingly or unknowingly or through anguish of heart, the word of heartedness, O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good one and lover of mankind, O God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. Bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear and straighten us for your holy goodwill. 
For you are our God, and to you do the glory, the honor, the dominion, and the worship together with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who is of one essence with you now and always unto the age of all ages. Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully our Father who art in heaven. All be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and heaven. Give us their daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, give us our blessings against us, lead us in temptation, let us through grace, so Lord, for the kingdom of God, glory forever. And now the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion and the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all, depart in peace, the peace of the Lord. Uh, we thank you, Abuna Kurullus Ibrahim, uh, so much for uh, coming here and giving these blessings to us and uh, this very uh, strong and deep uh, sermon uh, coming all the way from South Orange County, St. Marina Church. We thank him so much for uh, being with us this day. It's a great blessing. Uh, may God bless his priesthood and all of us come and give us this blessing. Okay, let's go and take a look at the Lord of God from our Lord. Let's go and take a look at the Lord of God.